Offbeat Sports Podcast. I would prevent a tale of two seasons for the Boston Celtics. I probably aged about 10 years just from that series. I'd probably compare myself to like, you know, just a younger, smarter, more handsome, stronger Michael Jordan. Let's go Celtics. Go Patriots. These are these are guys who, when they when you give them a bowl of Cheerios in the morning, they finish every last drop of milk. Absolute uh, clown over here. I'm ready when you are, baby. All right, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the Offbeat Sports Podcast. As today we are continuing our interview series called Offbeat University, where we interview Division One college athletes, both male and female, from many different sports to get the full perspective into the lives of our student athletes. Uh, today we're joined by Matt Saluka, quarterback for the Holy Cross football team. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, we appreciate it. So uh, starting back in your high school days, you played high school football for Kellenberg Memorial High School in Uniondale, New York, um, and decided to do a post-grad year at the Petty School. So how was your experience playing at these two schools, and how did playing that extra year help you prepare for Division One football? Um, yeah, so first off, my four years at Kellenberg, um, they were great. Kellenberg is a great school on Long Island. Um, Football-wise, I would say not really the best – um, football compared to like other schools across the country um, and just, you know, just development wise, like not many kids are going division one. Um, so it was all right from like that perspective. But um, I mean, I did great. It was a great experience. I loved every minute of it. Uh, we won a couple of championships when what 11 and 0, two years at 22 and 0. Um, what else? They, uh, it was great. It was just, I mean, it was a great experience. And then uh, I was going to play lacrosse. Didn't want to really do that um, after all. So I felt like a PG year would be best. Took, went down to Petty um, in Jersey and uh, played one season there. Um, came up here and loved my visit and uh, came here from uh, Coach Chesney, really. So Yeah, so you kind of touched upon um, you played lacrosse in high school as well. And you actually received interest from some of the country's best teams, such as John, Johns Hopkins, North Carolina, and Penn State, just to name a few. Yep. So what kind of made you choose to pursue a career in football and leave behind the game of lacrosse, especially when you had like offers from calendar um, schools? Yeah, I think it's just the excitement with football. Um, I mean, lacrosse. You know, it's fun. It's it's a, definitely a creative game. It's definitely a lot of fun. I loved playing it. Um, you know, I loved having my teammates go play D1. Um, it was a great – everything about it was great. I loved it. Um, I still do. It's just uh, football just had more of an opportunity um, kind of after college. And um, it was just like kind of like a new a new area. Like I played against some of the best kids in the country um, my entire life during high, during high school for lacrosse. Um, and so, like, I kind of knew what the expectation was. I knew – um, who I'd be going against and uh, football just had like a couple a couple question marks uh, that seemed like just interesting um, and I really just wanted to kind of take that challenge on and uh, you know see what I can do with it if it all failed I could have went back to lacrosse um, but I just feel like football kind of has a, a whole like a higher standard um, and so it just had more opportunity for me and I just wanted to play it yeah, yeah. You're clearly having that success so I mean <laughs> it all worked yeah. out right so far, yeah it worked out so far so jumping forward to your first year at Holy Cross, you started for the Crusaders in the FCS playoffs when you guys lost 31 to three against South Dakota State. Um, the team as a whole really struggled in that game. Mm -hmm. um, but earlier this year, you guys returned to SDSU for another playoff game and really put up, a, put up a fight this time around. You rushed for over 200 yards when they hadn't allowed a 100 yard rusher all season to anybody. Um, so what growth have you seen in your game since the first time you played South Dakota State and kind of what was your mindset going into this game um, only like kind of going out to get revenge? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously it was my what third game playing out there the first time. Um, like I've said, like in past things, um, we've had like, I don't know, 29 guys hurt or 29 guys that didn't really travel. Um, there were significant players on our team. And so just going out there with that many guys was like was a challenge in itself. Um, you know, me being my only my third game, I barely even knew the playbook. Um, I was really just out there kind of just helping plays with work and you know, just trying to do my best to make things happen. Um, we had a lot of Coker, Coker was still young. Um, you know, a lot of young guys out there. And um Newman was still young. Who was um there's a lot of guys out there that were just really young and just inexperienced and playing the number one team in the country. Like they have guys every year, year after year, who are going to be good football players, who are transfers, who are been in the program for five years. Like we didn't really have that at that point. We just had like, you know, a good season before, but we haven't had years of development. Um, and, you know, 
increasing in like recruiting and all that kind of stuff like hasn't really like it at this time for us wasn't really there um but obviously years ago on coaching gets better and we've just been able to recruit better and better players so obviously going out this time we kind of like felt we had a different team we felt we had a different um you know type of energy we used obviously that uh first game experience just as a lot like it was just like there's a lot driving um you know this like driving that ship kind of just going out there and just being like listen we 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 could fight with these guys we could be out here um you know we felt like we left it out uh we left kind of short short ended on the first time we played them and then the second time we just you know we were ready to give it our all and I think we did I mean it came down to like the last quarter really I was able to run around a little bit uh I think our scheme was overall just better um you know having played them once before um so overall yeah I think it was just a great experience to go out there again and you know try and fight so yeah, you kind of mentioned how Coach Chesney has really like played a role, a big role in the team's growth. Like, how is he kind of able to open the playbook up for you? Because the first time you guys played, it was a lot of running, smash mouth style. Like Pete got the ball a lot. Whereas this time, it felt like it was more open, right? Like you were you were allowed to yeah. throw the ball a lot more this yeah. time around. So we, um, yeah. So I think overall, that just comes from you know personally my development. Um, passing the ball I kind of struggled with that my freshman year and that was kind of a big one emphasis um, just in my development and just in my you know progress to get better um, but it uh, I think just being able to throw the ball just much better the second time opened up for more um, I also think just the offense being more experienced um, like I said Coke was Coke was a freshman um, you know we didn't have we didn't really have shorter a year didn't play that game um, you know we didn't really have our targets that we're normally used to seeing out here like we did last year um, so just having those guys uh, this year just opened it up more. And then I think just having a new uh, offensive coordinator just had a different scheme, you know, different vision on what we wanted to do against them. Whereas uh, the first time it was just, you know, someone else's perspective on what we should attack. And I just, um, I think it's just two different game plans, two different, you know, objectives. And uh, so I think that's just kind of what you're seeing year to year. Yeah. So a big part of college athletics in today's day and age is the NIL stuff. Um, so I think you've taken advantage of this. So would you like to talk about some of your NIL deals and how that, um, the new rules around your name, image, and likeness has kind of changed the opportunity for collegiate athletes? Um, yeah. So honestly, I really haven't done uh, too much yet. I've done a little bit, uh, mainly with a uh, shift group, uh, with Jared Butler, who's an alumni, um, of Holy Cross and, um, more just promoting his company, his brand, uh, shift group, and just helping college athletes get hired. Um, that was really the kind of the biggest focus I did uh, with anything like so far. Um, besides that, I did, a, you know, the, the deals with Liquid IV um, and just kind of open deals like that, that companies reach out and you can, you know, pretty easily get that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as like big real like deals, I haven't really done much. Um, I look forward to doing that kind of over the summer, trying to get uh, whether it's an agent or, you know, someone more on top of that um, just to manage it for me. Um, but yeah, I think there's definitely opportunities to be made. Um, I just got to kind of capitalize that and sit down and just take my time with it. So. Yeah. So, uh, you've also, you've built great chemistry and rapport with many of your receivers that you've played with at Holy Cross. But I mean, we got it uh, just from watching it. Uh, we'd probably say Jalen Coker is one of your, um, like best connections on the team. Um, uh, so how would you say that you and Jalen have been able to, uh, build up this relationship on and off the field to uh, translate it to the football field? Yeah, I mean, Jay's one of my best friends. He, like, you know, we're always together. We're always hanging out. Um, and just on the field, it's it's easy. It's easy to translate when your friend's off the field to be on the field. Um, you know, it's easy to communicate. We understand, uh, you know, what each other are trying to look for on the field and what, what each other needs, um, to, you know, for him to get open, for me to put the ball in a better location. Um, you know, we're all constantly communicating on that kind of stuff. And so it just makes our game smoother. Um, I mean, there's, you know, there's just less hiccups. Like we can go in a game and I know that if he has, you know, an option route where he has two, he can choose between one route or another. Like I'm just more confident in knowing what he's going to do and knowing how he's going to win. Um, just reading his routes, reading his releases so I can put the ball accurately on time. Um, and we just spend a lot of time doing it. I mean, there's a lot of hours in the summer, a lot of hours after practice, before practice. I mean, we're always in there just, you know, working on that kind of stuff. But it, it gets to a point where it's like such my new details that like you just want to keep going and going because it's like to make this perfect every single time. Like I know whether he jumps off his right foot or his left foot, where we're putting the ball, like it's just it comes down to like a real science and just, you know, understanding your receivers is huge. Just 
to improve the game and just make ourselves better. Um, so yeah, we're out there all the time, um, you know, constantly working. Um, and, but Jay's just unbelievable to work with. I mean, he has like a 43 inch vertical, something like that. Um, makes so your job a lot that. easier. <laughs> yeah. He just makes my job a lot easier. So it's just, you know, our connection is great, but it's, I mean, it's, he makes it really easy. Um, I mean, being an um, unbelievable football player he is, and uh yeah it's great so yeah just th just throw it up and uh he'll go get it yeah, what's, that, what's that meme to just uh yeah. fucking he's down there, there somewhere yeah jay's down there somewhere yeah sure so uh speaking of jalen coker's vertical one of the biggest plays in your career thus far was your hail mary throw to jalen coker against buffalo um to beat them there at the end of the fourth quarter and it was a play that was ranked number one on the sports center top 10 the next morning so kind of walk us through the play call from Coach Smith and how you kind of saw the play unfold from your point of view. So we had Jalen on here. He kind of walked us through what he saw. But what what was it like for you Liam, coming out of the huddle and as the play unfolded? Yeah, well, I mean, for me, my perspective is a little different because, like, I got to manage kind of like the situation a little bit more, um, you know. I have, like Jay's got to be aware of where he is and what he's got to do, but like it's more for me. It's like kind of just making sure the line's all correct, making sure everyone's where they need to be. Um, so that kind of started earlier in the drive. You know, we got our goal was to just get it close enough to be able to take that chance. Um, so we we're able to do that, able to get down the field uh, with Jay coming underneath. I think I, well, I scrambled for one the first, or Justin had it, um, but we ended with Jay coming underneath, getting a couple of yards first down, um, and then we could take this chance at a hail mary. Um, Obviously, we knew who we were giving the ball to. Um, you know, Jay's going down there. He's going to jump over everybody and get it like he does. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was just – I had a couple guys to the right, um, and uh, the line slid, took care of all those – like, all those guys. I had to buy myself a couple – you know, second or two because we were pretty far down, um, pretty far away from the end zone. Um, they just took off. They were running. I saw them get down there. I felt the guy come uh, from my right-hand side, like, underneath. And I just knew I had to put the ball up no matter like whether wherever it landed, it landed. It doesn't like it didn't matter at that point. Um, but I just knew I had to get it up before I got hit. And so I just put it up there as high as as far as I could, um, knowing that Jay was down there or someone was going to tip it. And uh, he came down with it. And then I was kind of just in shock. I, I didn't really see him come down with it. I didn't really see like what happened. I just like I watched him do it. But like it didn't really like hit me until I saw a year and like jumping up and down, going crazy. And I was like, wow, like we really just did that. But yeah, it was a great moment. So were you trying to throw to Jalen in particular or were you just because it was a trips? Were you yeah. just throwing to anybody? Yeah, well, going? like we kind of set it up. Um, like we have a formation for this specifically, uh, where it's like the, there's a jumper in the middle and there's a tip guy on both sides. Um, uh, and they're supposed to kind of like be in the mirror like of the ball. So where the ball flight is, their job is to get in line. Um, you know, so it's like kind of a three man's like stack in a way. And uh Jalen's job is to either catch it if he can or tip it. And so my job is to just put it on like near the goal line, wherever, like, that kind of mosh pit area is, just put it as high and far as I can. Um, and his job is to do the rest, whether you can tip it or get it or come down with it. Um, but he was lucky enough to come down with it. So, Yeah, so uh, the 2023 NFL draft just wrapped up, and uh, there's a few of your former teammates signed some undrafted free agent deals with teams and were invited to some rookie mini camps, um, including some of our uh, um, former guests, Liam Anderson and Peter Oliver. So I know it's in the distant future for you, but do you plan on trying to pursue a career in the NFL like them, or would you consider transferring to an FBS school like Ayer Asante did, or um, to improve your chances of getting drafted? If, if you want to talk about that a little bit, um, yeah. So I mean, I definitely have goals is going to the NFL. I mean, that was my dream when I was young, and so I kind of want to continue on that. Um, and so whether it's here, whether it's in another school, I'm not really I haven't you know I'm still focused just on this year. Um, and graduated from here. That was kind of my goal coming here was do my four years, graduate. Um, and then COVID hit and I have a bonus year now. What I do with that, whether I come back for a fifth year or not, um, I still haven't decided. I still want to just play the senior year um, and just still have feel at the end of that. Um, I mean, I love Holy Cross. I love it. It's great. Um, but at that point, I've done everything. I've Like I've graduated from here and that's what I came here for. So it's just whether I come back and enjoy my fifth year, knowing the coaches, knowing the staff, um, you know, knowing the playbook is a huge opportunity, but we're just, you know, just seeing what fits best, whether I go to a different school for my draft stock, for my draft stock. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, it's the question I still haven't answered yet. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see where uh, time goes after the season. But right now I'm just focused on this year. Um, it's my senior year, so I want it to be uh, something special. All right. Yeah. Now, so we got a few fun questions to wrap it up for you. So uh, who's your NFL GOAT? 
Who am I? NFL GOAT. Um, all time. I mean, I would say the GOAT of all time is Brady. But Good answer. Right. Like, like, I, I mean, I, Correct. I think the most fun, like most like common player to watch right now is Lamar Jackson. I think he's the best like entertainer as a football player there is. You kind of model your game after Lamar Jackson a little bit, being able to to run around, but also be able to throw um, when that's available. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess I don't really like model my game after someone like specifically. Um, I definitely take like bits and pieces of everybody's game. I mean, I think Lamar's like Lamar's ability to create and just you know make things happen in the run game is unbelievable, and he just does great things. So I like to steal a lot from his game, just his moves, his timing, um, you know, little details that I can, just his footwork overall. Um, but I think Josh Allen's a great player. I think Joe Burrow's a great player. Um, I mean, Pat Mahomes obviously. So there's little bits I try and steal from everybody's game. Um, just kind of, you know, become the ultimate elite, like elite player in every aspect. And so, you know, just take everything from everybody and kind of mesh, mesh it together. Yeah, so before a big game, you guys had the Fordham game this year. You got a big game against BC coming up this season. What is your go-to hype song you play to really get you ready for the game? Um, To be honest, anything by Lil Baby. Lil Baby, like, that's my favorite rapper. Um. I just I think his music just speaks to me when I'm trying to get in the zone locked in. Um a song in particular. Um, I don't know anything from my turn to luck. So all in, emotionally scarred. I don't know, there's a whole bunch. I could say them all. But if you could have any celebrity come watch you play for a game, who would it be? Oof, any celebrity that I can have watch me come play. Anyone um, be an actor, athlete. Yeah. Um, et cetera. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm trying to think. I would say maybe even little baby, or I would say why not bring my favorite rapper? In? But uh, I don't know. Maybe like I would say Michael Jordan. That's the goat of all goats. So at that point, let him come watch and just you know see see how he thinks my game is. To be honest, so. <laughs> there you go. So do you have a favorite non-football athlete you kind of look up to or kind of admire? Hmm. Non football. Non football athletes. Are? Yeah. Um, I would say Tiger Woods. I don't know. I think Tiger Woods is just a killer. And like he's just ruthless. Like he doesn't lose. He doesn't, he's locked in. Um, he's just a competitor in every aspect. And so I think Tiger Woods is just one, you know, he's one of the best at his game and what he does. Um, and just to be able to do it from some such a young age, I think it's just Something you know it gives him so much credit, and uh, so yeah, they would say Tiger Woods. Um, I don't know if you're an NBA fan, but NBA playoffs are going on right now. Who you got winning it all? Ooh, who do I got winning it all? Um, I don't know. I'm gonna have to say the Lakers. I'm gonna have to go LeBron here. Might have to go LeBron here. So Ouch. Coming Ouch. LeBron's coming back and doing it before Bronny comes into the NBA. He wants to win one more before Bronny comes in. Yeah. He had, he had the right answer with Tom Brady. He even brought up Michael Jordan, and then he, he killed us with the Lakers. Oh, my boy Thomas Peasley are riding with the Lakers. I'm riding. Oh, all right. All right. It's a Massachusetts-based podcast. Our viewers are not going to like that. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I mean, I want my, my – I'm a Knicks fan, so ideally the Knicks, but I don't think they're going to win the whole thing. So I would say who's going to win it, and I would say LeBron. Uh, so that's all we got for you thank you Matt for joining us we appreciate it yeah thank you yeah so uh, thanks everyone for watching and listening be sure to check us out on Instagram at offbeat underscore sports and on TikTok at offbeat sports um, and we'll see you next time uh, thank you